I think this is the this will be the problem with your mindset in, in, in many games for the future is that you only feel safe to make kills when you have Orchid. Which is absolutely incorrect mindset. You you have kill potential from level six against many many heroes overall and many many more heroes the lower you go on the, on the MMR and the more clueless the enemy players are. So I would I would even say you could try playing without Orchid for a couple matches, couple dozen matches even. Try maybe rushing Bloodstone first, maybe Kaya first, and just see how that affects your engagement capabilities. Like you yourself would think that hmm, I will not have Orchid soon. I should still make plays. What plays can I make? And that is the right mindset. You don't need Orchid to make plays. You make plays happen when you see other conditions to make plays, in which case a sniper, a spectre being low. So so what I'm saying is you, sh you should not put all of your dependence on an item which you might not even have on the worst happening games. Like if you face a horrible mid, Orchid time suddenly drags down to minute 15, you lose your tower, the space you can make plays in is greatly reduced. So you should learn the mindset to make plays with Storm while being item independent. Yep. I'll make a note of that. Yeah. It's not the Orchid enabling, enabling you to make plays, it's your spell kit, it's your level enabling you to make plays. Now, I, I like the part where you are walking all this way, that's a really good play. Because you're saving mana for when you actually need to jump. But let's take it one step further. And if we would take this moment to examine. With Spectre having this little health, I would say... If we're, being, if we're trying to be as efficient as possible, I would say the Orchid active is not really necessary here. Would you agree? So yeah, like I, I think uh, if I remember correctly, I was uh, thinking that they may haunt and escape. So, um, but yeah, they, I should have probably taken a look at their, their mana. They don't have enough mana to do that. Yeah, so one way you would have enough mana is to simply skip the Orchid's active. Because she is low enough to die during the Vortex combo, but we well, also somehow made a mistake. I'm not sure if it was intentional or unintentional. You you dropped the remnant during sipping. What was that about? Uh, I don't think I remember. Okay, so probably an unintentional. Uh, well, without putting the remnant on cooldown, the orchid would have been unnecessary because with the vortex combo and two more short zips, there is no way she would escape. She would die, and you would have saved some mana in the process. Overall, this is still a good play. If the mid lane is currently unprotected and you're not confident going there, try asking one of your supports to take the rotation for you, just so the tower isn't taking damage from the sniper. This second right here, with this much mana, is when you can start teleporting to the mid lane or any other lane and make 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 uh, kills happen. Because when you press teleport, you will still spend 
three more seconds and those three more seconds will be enough to fill your mana near full or full and if you would watch this again you spend one two three four five six seconds seven eight nine before you begin teleportation yeah um i think uh, yeah I, I completely agree with your point and i and i do that but i, I think at this moment i was uh I wanted to make sure that Sniper comes back to the lane after he finishes his jungle camp. I think I was waiting for a confirmation on that. Because I did not want to like uh, zip into their triangle. You, well, well, what you say would make sense if you were, if you still had your ultimate at level 1. I would agree with you because level 1 ultimate is extremely inefficient over large distances. But with level 12, you can reach him here in the lane on the camp on the triangle it doesn't matter as long as you as you see vision as long as you have vision on him you just champ the kill will happen either way okay yeah, like, this is one thing which i have uh, noticed over uh, multiple instances that once i'm in base i actually like spend considerable amount of time waiting to see if enemies show up in a particular lane close to towers where I can uh, teleport and uh, try to kill them. Um, sometimes I feel like the amount of time I take in deciding that is sort of negatively affecting my farm time. So I mean, yeah, that's just something which I, I don't know how to uh, think, uh, think or uh, like overcome that problem. That yeah, makes sense. I also spend a lot of time in the fountain being full mana just waiting for any carry or core to shop in the lane. But the main separation point between sitting in the fountain looking for kills is the fact that once you see the core, you must, wait, you must be ready to jump at the very second. And then we, what we have counted is you, you had like 9 second delay between the confirmation and actual teleportation and that is the inefficient part sitting in the base waiting for for your food to show up on the map on the minimap is absolutely fine but you must be ready to react i think like uh from from for this part we can probably like fast forward and just look at like the movements uh, since that is one thing i wanted feedback on um like and i and i'll also use this time to get to my next question it's basically like uh, i didn't think my team was uh, playing together so I wanted to I'm, know what I'm, I'm, ju I'm just gonna interrupt you here really quickly. At mm -hmm. at your MMR, your team doesn't matter. It re literally yeah, exactly. doesn't matter. Exactly. So exactly. So I I know that it doesn't matter, and I should be able to uh, solo carry the game, which which is what I want wanted feedback on. Like, what exactly uh, should I be doing that I don't need to depend so much on my team? That's, that's the thing. Everything I have said before on the landing stage carries over easily to the mid game and late game. And, and the main point is the enemies are clueless about the storm. So what will happen? They will very often have poor positioning, poor rotations. Uh, they will not itemize correctly against you. And it just goes to re repeat my, my sentence, which I say a lot, is that the pick up storm is an absolute nightmare for the enemies to play against in lower MMRs because they, 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 they just don't understand the concept. So as long as you keep playing aggressively, as long as you look for those pickups, you don't even need to care about your farm. The farm will come from kills. You can, you can even not touch a single jungle camp in the entire game and you will still solo carry the match. As long as you play aggressively, you will take those kills, you will make the space. Simply by playing aggressively and taking kills, you will allow your team to play 
more confidently as well because they will have the space to play because the, those heroes, the enemy heroes, will keep being down. And any, any any engagement the enemy team might take, they will think twice because Storm is so fast from kills, he can kill anyone. Just by existing, he will already make it easier for your team to play and for the enemy team to consider risky plays. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like, um, so, also, like in, in, in my bracket, um, people spend an absurd amount of time in the jungle. So, <clears throat> even if I'm ahead, um, and I'm taking uh, pickoffs uh, every few minutes, uh, and we can easily push towers, the team would wouldn't just group up and push towers. So I try to uh, push towers myself, but then I keep thinking like should i be doing this um that's where i get even more confused right now the past two three minutes what what i have seen is you took like three camps and killed a sniper and in between camps and sniper what you did was more camps not a single tower was being hit so what you said Makes sense, but you gotta make sure you actually do it. So as soon as you kill the sniper, stay in the lane. Either force a rotation or chip away at the tower. If you if you would say that your your health is low, your mana is low, in that case just ship out some clarities, mangoes and a self. And keep yourself high up so you can continue making those plays. When you have Orchid, especially in your games, when you have Orchid, your downtime between kills should not exist. The only downtime you have is to refill mana. And you can't refill mana if, you, if all you're gonna do is just hit those jungle creeps because you will spend their mana there. Ideally, you would uh, walk back to the base. If you're really, really low, you would walk back to the base and teleport, make a kill with your teleportation anywhere on the map. Or you can, like I said, if you're not too wounded, send yourself a clarity, send a self, stay on the map. The third option is the only option where you will hit jungle camps. And the third option is when it's less than a minute until the rune spawns. In that case, you will take two, three camps closest to the rune spawn spots and grab the rune immediately and use that to refill. Which, which isn't viable if the enemy is being aggressive in the mid lane because you have a risk of enemy taking the rune for you. In this match, all three options are extremely viable, but all I can see on the screen is you taking jungle camps. Uh, one more habit I want you to think about is while you're walking to the base, which you do a lot, spend those three seconds that you don't need to operate or hero to look around the map and click some heroes. You would see that sni Sniper is still being a little dumbass and has no health whatsoever, no save items whatsoever. He doubled down on being offensive, which will kill him faster. So he's still your number one target, number one easiest target to kill. Not necessarily the best priority target, because I would say Sniper doesn't matter in this match so far. LC has nothing. Just gotta be mindful of her melee duels. You know she doesn't have a blink dagger because you have just checked. Well, we have just checked. So LC is not a kill threat for you anytime soon. Warlock, just the ultimate. Honestly, this this entire lineup is extremely easy for you to simply keep feeding on. You have nothing. All you need is one Lincolns for LC's duel, and that Lincolns will also cover the stun from Witch Doctor, and they have nothing to kill you with. So what I was saying is, uh, take those three moments to look around the map, 
re-evaluate everyone's items. Like if if on that moment you would see LC with a dagger, then you will know now she poses a serious kill threat on you. And you would play more carefully around LC. But right now, nothing of that sort is happening, so you are free to kill absolutely anyone you see. And I can see her teleporting to the top. Which is a good because Spectre, unlike Sniper, will be the more dangerous person in this match. So that part is good. Except I was hoping you would immediately jump to her. Yeah, uh, I would. I think I changed my mind because uh, my team uh, disengaged and I think I s probably saw Witch Doctor there. The Warlock does not have the ultimate. So I would say you should be pretty confident to jump. Because uh, if you if you rally your team by playing aggressive, eventually I think the team will see that Storm has jumped, he might need help, they would come to you. If, if you were solo, then yeah, maybe they could have stacked some stuns, uh, the Spectre could have blade mailed. But yeah, I think even with the Rubik, providing a soft disable, you can easily kill someone. Like, if you're not confident killing Spectre, you can easily still jump the Witch Doctor or the Warlock, and it's a 100% a kill. And in the end, they still can't kill you. So, any play you do here, the enemy will have no other options but to retreat. There we go. Silence is a little late. Yeah. I mean I like I have died too many times. Uh so I, I tend to uh commit only once I'm sure that I'll uh get the kill at least like ninety percent. Okay. See, this entire map is a playground. Anyone you meet, you kill. And this, this is the root of your problems. You're walking around more than half HP. What you just did, you just checked like five camps and went straight back to base when there was absolutely no reason for any of that <laughs> like if we, if we rewind back Just by watching the minimap, you would have seen Sniper right here. Now, against this, this particular Sniper, who has built zero defensive items, zero health items, you don't need any resources to kill him. How would, would, I, how would I have seen Sniper? He passed through the ward. That's why I keep reaching, checking, keeping eyes on the minimap. Mm -hmm. Here, do you see it? Yeah. Yeah, so instead of, instead of what you did, instead of visiting 
all of the camps and then going back to your base. Just eat that clarity and make your way to the sniper. Eventually you will find him, eventually you will kill him. There is a lot of unnecessary map movements on the mid game from your part. Yeah, I mean, like, like that's why I wanted to like this is probably the most important. Uh, it is question that I question that I that I had was like like after like the initial stage, I get my or grade, I get a few pickoffs. Like uh, unless I see that the team is inclined to push towers, I sort of like become clueless as to like what should I do next. I don't want to just go solo in their jungle. Um, and and die because like this game like we don't have vision like I checked a couple of times like uh, I buy wards whenever possible uh, and don't always remember to place them but uh, like when I do like I do do try to uh, get into the habit. Oh look at that LC has blink already. The one other thing you can work towards making plays happen is to simply push out lanes. Because you know that whenever a lane is pushed out, someone on the other end of that lane will eventually have to come and de-push. If you push mid lane, Sniper will show. If you push top, Spectre will show. So if, if you don't know how to find kills, simply by pushing lanes those kills will show up themselves. Mm-hmm. And I would say even if even if you're a little bit confused right now about who you can kill, if in those situations when you don't know who you can who you can touch, who you can kill, you can always you can always simply target the towers. Because I keep saying this across all the videos, the mid lane tower is the most important one. As long as you bring it down, you will have all of the space on the runes, more of the vision capabilities. So if 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 you're not confident about the pickoff potential, just sit in the middle, take those creeps, chip at that tower. And what eventually will happen is either the enemy will rotate middle, which will take the pressure off the side lanes, or nobody will rotate or at least a single hero will rotate in that case either the tower dies or the hero dies which we can see right now oh unfortunate hey you live cool nah never mind Yeah, we, we had this offlane weaver. Like I said, I don't so, think your yeah, your team so, speaks. So I will die right here. So, yeah. So, like this was like I saw I saw Spectre here, uh, and I immediately jumped because I could see from the mini map that uh, she's alone. I jumped, uh, probably two. Uh, tanky for me. No, no, she's not. In the cases where the enemy rushes blade mail first item, all you gotta do is you gotta save your spells until the blade mail is forced. Mm -hmm. Like, if you would think about from the enemy perspective, if a storm jumps him, what he will do? He will immediately pop blade mail. If he thinks he is smart and he will wait to for popping blade mail, he will still keep losing health because Storm is stronger than him just with right clicks. So eventually he will be forced to pop late mail, pop late mail. And that is your cue to commit. When, when they pop late mail, you can keep hitting them with the right clicks or you can simply disable the blade mail with the vortex, keep them in place and then re-engage with orchid. To squish your targets, you can just kill through the blade mail. Again, Spectre, I would say you can force her blade mail and then do the vortex or kill her afterwards. But the main point is that 
Spectre, when alone, she cannot kill you. If you pop her blade mail, if you, if you bait her blade mail, she is dead. Yeah. yeah, this is probably what I should have done. I should have baited the blade mail, baited it out. Um, and I think she also had Manta, so uh, she evaded the Orchid finisher. Yeah, when she does have Manta, that is when she becomes unsuitable for pickoffs. Until then, it's a kill. Can we can fast forward through this um, and maybe you can um, like I wanted to know about so what would what would you say like I should do in this case like like all the players are grouped around top so I should probably look in their jungle for pickoffs one of the options yes I would say your ideal play is still to take the mid tower down, because that tower is really good for the space taking. And you will you should always remember this that if they are grouped at one place, this means their defenses will be weaker at another place. Like if you don't wanna fight top because they have the dual thingy which can kill you and the other things. If you don't wanna fight somewhere, you can make plays somewhere else, be it the mid lane. Actually, in this match, only the mid lane, because the bottom lane's towers is taken, you have no business there. Yeah. Or, if if you did what you did here, if you invaded the, the top lane, then make sure to stay around and help your team take that tower. If you're confident that your team can take that tower alone, then sure, go, go ahead and leave, <laughs> do something else, but... In the cases against better teams, what you'll want to do is to stay off the enemy vision if if you're farming camps then you want to farm the closest camps to this area where your team is fighting and just simply be ready at any moment to rejoin the fights got it Like you can see the Rift King is pushing middle, you have no business going there and messing up his last hits, just go somewhere else, do some other business. See, it's minute 22 and only now the mid tower falls, when in the reality, when you have an advantage over the enemy mid laner, in this case Sniper, you had every single advantage in the world. His tower could have fell by minute 10 if you just focused it, focused on it. Mm So if we look at the past minute, all you have done is slowly box your base while losing mana. I'm not sure if you wanted to find fights and couldn't find fights, but in that case, one one thing to avoid playing like this is to simply have your mind focused on on an objective. Like if if you want to fight. But you want to wait for their team to initiate or your team to initiate. In that case, you don't just sit around aimlessly. You you go take some jungle camps near where the fight is. If you don't want to take the fight, 
if you think the fight will be a loss. In that case, you must immediately start pushing some other lane, so that one of the two things will happen. Someone from the enemy team will have to begin de-pushing whatever lane you're pushing, weakening the enemy team's engagement capabilities, or the tower will be threatened. Both of these conditions are good for you. But if you just zip around while doing nothing, losing all their mana and going base, this ultimately achieves nothing. And the mindset, mindset I want you to be in is always think where you can make some impact. Yeah, uh, you're, you're right. I was actually looking for uh, pickoffs and when I noticed like three heroes running at me, so that's when I uh, started zipping away. And now that I see the replay, I can see that I'm just spending too much time just walking from point A to point B. Yeah, you are. You are what I would say is a, an opportunistic pick offer. It's like if you see someone low, you will go and kill him, but you're not working towards making those opportunities happen in the first place. And one of the ways we have discussed is to simply push a lane and someone else from the enemy team will have to defend. Which will separate the enemy team, allowing you to actually create opportunities for the pickups to happen. Yeah, I, I think uh, that is a nice summary of of the playstyle. Like, I mean, in my mind, I, I feel like uh, Storm showing in lane is not good so i try to just stay away from from hitting towers as much as possible even though like at least like when we should be pushing to uh, create pressure or like force movements i think it should be fine at at specific moments of the game like if if i if i am able to uh, force two teleports to the tower i'm hitting I can quickly zip away from vision and TP to another lane and then kill a core there. Yeah, that's the thing, you have just answered your own concern. Yes, Storm showing to a lane will give the enemy information about where Storm is, but by definition it means nothing, simply because Storm has the best map movement capability of all the heroes. So if you see Storm middle, that doesn't mean shit, he can be tapped the next second. And and that you, and that's why you shouldn't be afraid to show yourself. Unless you're hunting a specific hero who is afraid of you, like a anti mage, before Manta, Void with a Chrono. Un unless they specifically will play on the side of the map where they don't see you, or they will not even show until they see you. In that case, yes, you can stay concealed, but in, in this match, anytime you show on the lane, there is nothing the enemy can do with this information. They don't have good catch spells. LC has dual, but you'll have Lincoln soon. Uh, there is, in this match, I don't see any, like, uh, criteria where you should be afraid to show on the lane. I think I, I I got answers to pretty much uh, all of my questions for this game. Um, and do you think the order of itemization was correct? Uh, maybe you can just fast forward 16x and see what items I make. For the items, I would I would even say, since your only kill condition is the duel, you could play even more aggressively if you would rush 
Lincolns as their second item instead of Bloodstone. Because right now you cannot commit to any lanes too hard, because the LC can jump from Woods and duel you. But if you would have Lincolns as second item, minute 20, minute 25, in that case you can be even better at conditioning kills because you can be more aggressive pushing those towers and to re reiterate once again as long as you push towers the enemy team will have to split which enables even better pickoff potential okay. I mean I think if I remember correctly my mindset was that um, I'm having a fairly decent time, like I'm not dying, uh, I'm able to get pickoffs uh, in my uh, CS is still like okay. So I thought maybe I should prioritize Bloodstone first and then, then get uh, the Lincolns. The thing is, if, if you're not dying, if you're getting kills, but those kills are not are not gaining your team space or reducing the enemy space in that case do those kills even matter like in this match yes you have 12 kills but half of those were on supports and half of those those did not work towards any objective like we have seen the mid tower going down at minute 22 which is extremely high low time bad time whatever so with the with the Lincolns, every you might have less kills, but every single of those kills would have meant more damage at the towers, and your team having more space on the map. Okay. Like, what's the point of you having Orchid Bloodstone? if you will be constantly afraid to jump to fights because LC can duel you. Yeah, apart from and like uh, apart from like uh, LC's duel, like if there are like too many right clickers and like you, here in this case they are uh, grouped. So like Sniper can keep on hitting me uh, so and if I'm there so can Spectre um, and even LC. So how should storm play when the enemy team has like too many right clickers like i feel that if i go on one the other two just jump on me and i just die to right clicks that is a valid concern yes and the thing to remember is storm is not a right clicker himself his his damage comes from big zips the vortex combo and keep staying mobile while shooting out the overloads and all of this makes it extremely hard for the enemy to hit you the only way the enemy hits you if you is is if you are disabled so as long as you work towards disabling those disables like in this match your only concern is lc's duel and which doctor stun which lincoln takes care for both you can just keep zipping around and let your tank your teammates in this case your carry Grave King and the Weaver, and then with the Silence's ultimate, th there is there is no way that you are forced to stand and trade right clicks when you can keep jumping around. When there is no one on the enemy team stopping you from jumping around, if they commit on you, just zip out and re-engage. It's it's very simple. Um, and on, on a related note, uh, since I, I highlighted this problem, um, I mean, I don't have anything uh, else in this match. Like, I just wanted want to check if like this is the same problem I faced in another match. Uh, if if we have uh, about five minutes to just check check on that. Okay, okay. Let's let's end the session for this match then.